welcome back. We're talking with the representatives of the Sigmusha Manufacturers Association about the upcoming awards, as well as some of the other issues uh, affecting manufacturing generally. Um, the awards are the Sian Lucia Manufacturers Association Quality Awards. That's happening on March 8th. Um, can you give me an idea of the format um, for those awards or that award presentation? Okay, well, w we have an evening of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And what we, what we, ha what we have is a um, mini exhibition. Um, when you walk in on your way like to, so that to introduce pro the products, the local products mm -hmm. um, that we have. And, um, we, and we have a small cocktail, a short cocktail, um, uh, as we start commence the proceedings and then we sit down to dinner. We have a formal dinner and the, uh, the main guests are uh, company members, members of all the companies are, and, and their staff. We have extended it you know, to, mm -hmm. the, to the staff members themselves and we also have dignitaries, um, the, well usually the, um, the Prime Minister. Uh, or Governor General, depending on who's in the country at the time, and some key government um, officials will be there as well. Um, that's um, TIPA, the, the um, yeah. Trade and Export Promotional right. Agency. And this okay. time around, we hope to have um, the, the regional manufacturers at, as well attending um, um, this event. So um, we sit down to dinner and then the awards presentation starts. Mm. And it forms the basis, the, the largely the most of the, the, the activity for the night. And we, ha we, may, we have a, a musical rendition and just, you know, informal and, and formal discussion at the table. And at the end, we have some dessert and we, and we celebrate whoever has won. And yeah. we just have a happy night of manufacturers <laughs> and mingling. <laughs> Would you like to come? <laughs> <laughs> hope you'll be. I hope you'll be, <laughs> you'll be there. Before the break, we were talking about um, some of the issues affecting the the, the sector, including um, technology. How has technology reshaped um, the manufacturing sector and its ability to compete? Well, technology um, with it depends on your the area of um, obviously mm. your area that you're manufacturing. Because uh, as you can see, our membership manufactures a wide range of. Um, products and so, um, goods mm -hmm. and uh, technology makes it much more efficient um, as you invest in technology you're, you're, you'll become a lot more efficient you're able to address quality issues which you don't necessarily um, you, you can't address with manual handling mm -hmm. um, so the more you invest in technology in terms of your processes especially in manufacturing um, you will get benefits on your cost at the end and your quality of product that you manufacture at the end of the day. Um, even in IT, when you think of IT now, it does give you um, the access and the ability now to market your goods. That's yeah. where the global market becomes, um, you know, accessible on IT because if you create a really good website, if you're out there pushing your goods, your information is your item, whatever you manufacture and it's out there. Um, then you can communicate with anybody around the world who's looking for a similar item. So um, IT technology in terms of IT, um, the internet and so have given you access. In terms of your, ma your manufacturing process, this uh, allows you to improve quality and, the, and standardize the products that you put out and reduce your costs overall. Although well, having said that, does it now force you to keep your prices at a certain level to compete with those um, Imports or well, yes, um, um, under that pressure. You <laughs> <laughs> that's something that you can just yeah. you never get rid of. Um, you're always there going to have to face the competition. Okay. Um, that market research, you constantly have to be checking to see what's happening. But I wanted to add something about technology. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that I with the newer type of equipment, even like with our our equipment at the plant where I work, which is um, Sunfresh, a subsidiary of Winfresh Limited, right. where we produce some um, H two O and other beverages, mm. so I think, no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> we, we Send your bill for that. <laughs> <laughs> and what has happened is um, the, some of the machinery um, uh, are connected to mm. the IT systems. Right. And for instance, um, um, our, the, uh, the, our, what do you call it, the, 
the equipment itself is clocked into the some of our suppliers out our, our international suppliers who can read exactly okay. what's happening to our our with our machines and they can tell us if there's a problem they can isolate it mm -hmm. they can identify it they can repair it they can tell us what to do etc and that's that is what yes. that's the, uh, what yes, how <laughs> IT has impacted you know yes. in the manufacturing world and mm -hmm. that's and that that is the case for about two or three of our pieces of our equipment which I can think of right now and they're probably more you see, so it has definitely in IT has impacted. So a problem that we have can be seen by our suppliers, our, this, our equipment suppliers, and tell us exactly what to do. They 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 can they can they we, they can ha they can be brainstorming with our technicians here in Saint Lucia. Mm -hmm. so we, we've heard that the manufacturing sector, um, and I guess it's not a problem just restricted to manufacturing, um, but business generally. Whether um, that you have a problem locating as well as retaining trained or skilled staff. What do you think is responsible for that? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think to some extent our education system, hmm. um, s it starts with that where we have a had a for the past, you know, over a number of years, mm -hmm. a very heavy focus on academics right. and no training really in work ethics um, the mo the skills and so um, other other skills were not necessarily pushed. We've seen that change, and we see we're seeing education evolve as you as you come along. Um, what it is, in essence, companies have to do now is actually invest in the people. You you need to get the right attitude, the good um, good foundation, basic skills in people, and invest in them to try to make sure that you can get the standards that you want. Um, people. It's, I think education is just taking a little time to adapt and get to uh, the, the specific requirements of the commercial world. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that's important is building capacity within the institution. I think that um, the, the management of the company has to look strategically at their employees because mm -hmm. what happens is when an employee has experience over a time period, you may think you can get a better employee perhaps, but if you build a capacity of, of, that, of that employee, just like the Japanese do, they, when, they enter com when they enter an institution, they, they never think of leaving. So everything is done to ensure that, that the people stay because then you, you lose too much of institutional knowledge mm -hmm. when people leave your company and, and, and move somewhere else. And it's very difficult because of the, of, of the way manufacturing is. It's very I difficult to get people into that sort of type of employment and have the same you know, uh, uh, able to work at the same level at the pace itself because manufacturing is very specific. It's not just an ordinary desk job. Right. It's not just an ordinary, it, 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 it's unique, it even has a personality. Mm -hmm. There are people who, because you have to work very efficiently, you have to work, you have to work long hours perhaps, you may have to work over time sometimes, you know, to start the plan, to keep it going, you may, ha you may have to come in early and it really takes a certain character to get into that sort of field and so I think that uh, the management is always uh, aware of what they need to do to ensure that the, ca that, the, the, that, the te that you build strong teams mm -hmm. because once you build a strong team nobody wants to go anywhere mm -hmm. you know and, and it's important to do that you know and if you could just and as they continue to realize and recognize they understand why team is team, team building you're doing more than anything mm -hmm. else. But you have to get them in before you can build a team. Well, yes, so with do you the think education. That the image yeah. of the industry um, is part, partly responsible for that. The people have this perception of the manufacturing industry as being, you know, dark, dirty, dangerous kind of. I don't. I don't necessarily yeah. think that. I think it's based on the individual employer. Any company, mm -hmm. no matter who you are, based on your reputation, how you treat your staff, or what you do, um, mm -hmm. you will you, your 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 employees will go, then you will build a reputation. Um, I work with St. Lucia Distillers, we're a manufacturer, and I think we're an employer of choice. A lot of people want to come and work at St. Lucia Distillers, um, and it's because we've made the effort to develop our staff, work with our staff. And I think I would encourage any company, uh, anybody out there, to, to, to do the same, mm -hmm. because the benefits that you get, the, what the, the, the rewards that you will reap out of a committed, um, well-trained um, staff mm -hmm. 
it's you you can't even measure it yes, i mean it's, exactly. it's it's unbelievable it's a it's a tremendous difference to to, to where you have in different staff and you have a made the effort and to bring them along I mean, the whole process though starts with recruiting recruiting yeah. the right the right people like i said with the, the right basic skills good attitude and a, you know a, 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 a ready to work and prepared to work it's about the third or fourth time you mentioned the attitude yes. Um, yes. and I, I suspect a lot of people who young people especially coming out of school um going purely thinking that you know the qualifications and certificates are going to get them through how important is attitude in your overall yeah um, you have recruitment? in terms of attitude you have people who want to work for the sake of working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then but and those people don't if they're not interested if you 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 can't um, it's very difficult to get those people to commit mm -hmm. you may you get other people who are who want to work who who want to, to, to see results, who, who feel proud when, when they could see an end result and mm -hmm. I've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. And with that type of attitude, um, they can always be successful because you can always train somebody. Mm -hmm. You can always teach them new things. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. attitude is so important. It's key. Once you get people with the right attitude, then mm -hmm. they, they come into an environment and they come into an environment. Um, you know, ready to, to commit and to work and to hunker down and mm -hmm. do yes. what it takes, you know then it makes a, a tremendous difference. I think motivation is also key. And you yeah. have to be talented in motivation because you've got to drive. You've got to drive these people. And sometimes, like for instance, look what happened with the trough. The trough occurred on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And our right. workers were, were at work. They yes. came into work to, to tidy up, to clean up, because we had damage from, mm -hmm. from mud, et cetera, and, and flooding, et cetera. And I mean, it's difficult. It would be very difficult to get some employees out of their houses <laughs> on Christmas <laughs> Day or Christmas holidays, mm -hmm. you know. And so it, it takes, but, but when you build that sort of team attitude and team approach, if, if especially if they have a strong um, leader, a strong supervisor, that supervisor can lobby all of them and listen, everybody is like, you know, it shows oh up God. on that <laughs> day at the time and, you'd, and you'd, you would not know it's Christmas. You know, and so it is that and en that kind of energy and that kind of um, that kind of um, personality and culture you want to you want to drive. You want mm -hmm. to help drive your business because they are really the ones who drive the business, and they force you. Even if you might have thought you don't want to come out on Christmas mm -hmm. Day <laughs> when they're out there waiting outside of your door mm -hmm. to to come to come for the cleanup, you you have to be there. <laughs> yeah, now speaking of energy, it reminds me of a statement you made early on mm -hmm. um, about the Manufacturers Association having to make representation to Lucilec on behalf of one of your members. I want to talk about energy and the, the surge in, in energy costs, how it's affecting um, the manufacturing sector, um, oil prices, how it's affecting transportation and the impact on the sector. Yes, energy is a significant cost um, for most of us, for most um, manufacturers. It is, a, it, it, it is a substantial cost. Um, it is one of the few er one of the areas where we are disadvantaged versus a country like Trinidad, mm -hmm. where the manufacturers yeah. get um, energy at very very Low um, cost, attractive yeah. cost, mm -hmm. and so it does disadvantage us. Uh, we've seen over the um, last few years tremendous increases in freight rates. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, making shipments, it's become quite expensive. Making exports, exp I mean, profits on exports are minute now, mm. really because of the, the type of freight rates and the fact that you go out in the mm. international market and you're having to compete. So we have been impacted, and um, a lot of us have had to get very creative with um, use, you know, how we use energy. Um, we've, uh, you'd seen most uh, of the manufacturing plants are very a heavy focus on the, the usage of energy, mm -hmm. um, measuring your ener energy efficiency, mm -hmm. um, down to even using lights. And so you right. see people um, adopting strategies. In fact, one of the awards that we, we didn't mention that we do have is the Green Award, the Eco. And it is, it is dealing with, I mean, what companies are doing with reducing the energy costs and reducing mm -hmm. wastage, mm -hmm. um, because we've recognized right. that that's one of the, the key areas. Um, and trying to encourage people to find alternative forms of energy, um, you know, they use some Easy. renewable energy, and that, that's what the, the award is built yeah. on, the Lawson Cauldron Eco Award this year that we are adding as our sixth award. And it is it's, it's built on, um, is looking at structure and design of the plant, the recycling of materials, the use of renewable energy, mm -hmm. waste disposal, 
you know, the efficient use of natural resources, etc. So this is this is the, the way of the future. Right. As you know, um, in the international um, arena, there's there's a lot of talk about green thumb and green mm -hmm. products, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and sometimes people buy products because they are green. And I think that it is it is it is our hope, and and this is the direction that we want to go into, that we where we consider the environment and everything that we do. And it also we have another the social responsibility. Well, it's true, but it, it it's part of it as well because mm -hmm. you see if you are socially responsible, you you know that you have to take care of your environment. Yeah, right. you have to look after the community around you. Yes, 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 um, yes, definitely. So it's it's being very responsible. Yes, we're yes. all we're encouraging all of these for manufacturers. Absolutely, absolutely. Because what we try to do, like in in our particular setting. Is that we want to work with the with the community, that the schools around us in mm -hmm. our area. Um, I in our particular case, we are in the Caldisac uh, Odsa area. Mm -hmm. That's where our plant is in Caldisac, and our office is in Odsa. And we want to work. We are very interested in working with the community in that area. And so that's part of the whole building. And and the thing is, as you build, it's a lot of the our workers to come. Not from not too far away, right. um, logistically, mm -hmm. you know, it helps logistically, and also it, the, you know, being like being a part of the environment that they're in, they they feel a sort of an ownership, right. and that's what you really want. You want people to feel that ownership, and then that way that they they, they, they look at as if the the company belongs to them. It's it's, it's all part of the whole umbrella, you know, and it, it really does um, work. Yeah. yeah. At this point, I want to remind the viewers the lines are open, so you can call in if you have questions or comments and join the conversation. We're speaking with Margaret Monplazy, the first vice president of the Signature Manufacturers Association, and Rene de Myers, the secretary of the Manufacturers Association. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation and take your calls. <laughs>